got myself into trouble when I was around about, I reckon about, I was about 20 years old. And uh, and I was I was in the old Bailey, and uh, the fellow beside me had just killed someone, and the other fellow bes- to the left had just, for the crime that we was in there for, had just committed it again. So the three of us are there, and they said, and caught five of the old Bailey, and, and uh, was up for something quite serious. Uh, well, it was, it, it was uh, anyway, my barrister come down to me. He said to me, listen, I can cut a deal for you. He said, you weren't caught on the scene. You weren't caught with any clothes. Like, they ain't got no evidence on you. They, 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 it's only word of mouth that you're, you're here. You haven't said anything. They can't really put anything on you. Yeah. So I can cut a deal for you. I went, cut a deal, what's that mean? So he said, well, you can walk out of this court today. I went, that sounds great. I went, well, so we all get out. He went, well, they've been done for murder, and the other one's been done again. So I went, well, what does that mean? He went, well, they was caught there. They they were stabbed, and so they went to hospital. But, and so they can't get out of this. Yeah. He said, but they spent an awful lot of money bringing these people back to this country. Conversations with Nick Con. I've got someone really, really, really special in today um, called Jeff. Um, Jeff was fundamentally one of the most important starts of my journey in recovery. Um, and we go on, we go on and, and, and hear Jeff's story. But I'd like to start by welcoming Jeff to the studio. Welcome. Well, Welcome, Jeff. Thanks Thank for coming you. in. Um, as you, as I mentioned to you, we always start with a really bad drug-related joke, but I'm going to try and veer away from that today. But I wanted to tell you about a problem I've been having with. I've been taking a lot of brake fluid, but I feel like you know I can stop any time I want. Honestly, <sighs> I'm going to leave. <laughs> right. So thank, thank you for coming in, Jeff. Um, so. I mean, honestly, I've been so excited to have you in because I remember a story when I first started. I know I came back from Berlin. Yeah. My dad was obviously petrified and worried about me and the the, the the drama that I got myself into in Berlin with the Albanians, with homelessness, with all of that drama. And I came back. Now, we didn't know where to go, what to do. My family wanted to help me and didn't know how. And, and being a, a long friend of his and the family, he reached out to you and I remember you tried getting me to come to Chelsea and I said uh, I'm not coming all the way to Chelsea and you said to me and I don't don't know if you remember this and I said well you said to me well I've got a grandma Charlie here for you come up and, and you can have it and so I was up there in a jiffy and obviously there wasn't a gram of cocaine but you demonstrated to me that I'm still showing that I'll go any lengths for addiction but not for recovery yeah. and that really Said home. You also said a message to me, and I'll never forget this. If you don't stop this shit now, you're gonna have someone knocking on your door like me, or knocking on your dad's door like me, and that really kind of resonated. That that uh, I've got to stop this because I'm getting in with some wrong people, um, and one day my family are gonna get a knock on the door by the wrong person that's not gonna, you know, accept payment plans or or whatever the case may be. Uh, and it resonated so I'd like to really just start by start from the beginning just just hear your story if you come a little bit closer to the mic sure sure how's that per, is that better I think that's better uh, do I just look at you yeah just look at me okay um, my name is Jeffrey obviously and um Getting getting sober, getting clean, is definitely the hardest thing I've ever done. I'm not one of them people that just walked into AA and uh, and got it straight away. <clears throat> it took me quite a, quite a few years to uh, to get sober or clean and. Um, 
It's probably it's probably a, 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 I'm one, of them, I'm one of those drunks that had to lose everything before I could get it. Yeah. That's that that's that's if someone said how did you get it, uh, how did you get sober in the end? The reality is, firstly, I couldn't afford. I finished up on the gold can, you know, which alcoholics that cult that special brew that gold can kills pain it's like a heroin it's like an alcoholic that gold can is like heroin affixed to a, a junkie yeah. so uh, th- 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 that gold can killed pain and in the end it was much easier to be drunk than it was to be sober I was right. I, I, I was I was on the streets by that time and uh and I was lonely uh, and and, and I've got to tell you, I'll, I'll go on to this but I wasn't by that time when everything's gone you don't get scared you're quite numb and that gold can numbs your feelings takes your fear out maybe what heroin does uh, uh with you when you spike up so um I didn't come from a family I didn't come from a council estate and I didn't I didn't know how I became an alcoholic. I, I I've always chased adrenaline. I've I've always tr- chased danger, adrenaline <clears throat> and I've always liked being like for want of a better word, you know that song, uh, You Could Always Find Me in the Kitchen at Parties? Yeah. Well, you could always find me in a kitchen because that was where the cocaine was and that was where the alcohol was. I've I've never been like a... Um, I, 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 I was one of them people that uh, used to go down to Brighton on a scooter, like, you know, and then we'd have a fight with all the Hells Angels on the beach and it was <laughs> quite... Hum- you know, it was quite... Uh, they loved it and we loved it and... And with that film Quadrophenia, you know, like that was a, like after story. We 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 we'd go there and we'd drop black bombers, right? And then you just you just stayed in Brighton, and 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 then come you used to you would go in the city. You know, just it was just a cra- very crazy time. But going back to my back to my youth, I my my father works in a street market, and I and I. I work in the gutter, uh, of, and, I, and uh, my, it was my 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 stall now. Is mine. It was my dad's. My dad had went to war, and it was his nan, and it was his mum's. So my so we, we we've always had the stalls in the family in yeah. the family in Fulham, and I work in the gutter, and I've always worked in the gutter. And my dad did, and my nanny did. So our our wealth. Has come from working in, in in a street market in the gutter. Now that why I emphasise on that is because my school uniform come from Harrods, and the fruit game was good to the old man, you know, and and uh, um, the fruit game was good, and my mum had a, bro- a quite a, a good brain, so she. They, the, the, there was a, there was, there was always good money in uh, uh, working years ago before yeah. supermarkets and things like that. So the reality is, I became I was a, quite a posh child. Uh, I I I wasn't. No, I was silver spoon for want of a better word. And so when I go to get my school uniform, my mummy would take me to Harrods, and my school uniform would be uh, from there. And we we drive there, and in the middle of Harrods, I used to have a smoking area, you know, like where all the chauffeurs would go. And I can remember people were on pipes or cigars, and and I used to look around, and you, your senses would. And I never forgot that. And then years later, I would go to Harrods, and I like I used to look for the scent of my, mu- you know, where my mum used to dress me. Yeah. I used to look for a woman, and I used to try to smell her. And then downstairs there was a pub. So I could go down there. I used to have a fantastic cold Guinness in Harrods years ago. I used to go down and I used to give the geezer a, 
a, a, a drink, a, a, ch- a chin, a fiver, and go in and he'd wipe the seat. He thought I was going through for have a poo, but really I used to go in and line up a bit of Charlie in there, get a, get drunk, get a bit stoned, and then walk round Harrods out, bit out, mate, then buy loads of things, you know. But that was from a childhood, you know. Yeah. But going back to my mum, we would get dressed. She would dress me in a school uniform, and then we we, we went. To, me and my brother went to this uh, school, private school. And then, but they would accept our money. But because we worked in the gutter, they looked at us like pikies. Okay. So they 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 would, they would accept you to come, but you know, you wasn't accepted it into yeah. into the actual fold. Yeah. So we wasn't taught anything. My brother was in one corner, and I was in the other corner. And uh, they would accept our money. And then one day, my my brother, I had a, we had, we had, I had the flu, and my nose was running. So the school teacher, uh, the, the the mistress said. Um, uh, Haram, put put your uh, put your uh, wipe your nose. I said, Mar- M- Mom, I haven't got a, 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 a an anky. She said, Get one of your brother. So my brother came. I said, Co- Come over here, Frankie. She said, Give your brother an anky. She said, Look, we've all got flu in our house, and my anky is full of uh, snot and bogies, Mom. So she said, We'll give him that. He said, But it's rotten. She said, We'll give it. And I never forgot that he had to give me this snotty. Anky, yeah, and I looked at her, and as a child, you know, you're only little, like you know, you're an, uh, and I'm looking at her, and I had to accept this, and I just thought snobbery in life. I've never ever forgot the the snobbery of that. Now I'm years older, but I've never forgot that. It yeah. was the first time that I engaged in snobbery. Or, and funny enough, as we used to come out of school, all these ch- these children were quite chubby and fat, and they used to have great big long dogs, like they called them sausage dogs, yeah. and their tits would hit the floor, and the dogs would resemble them, and they would resemble their mum. And they used to look around, and I think, I'm nothing like these people. And that goes with you in life. So when you work in the gutter, uh, it, it, you, 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 sometimes you, um, sometimes snobbery, and especially years ago was a big thing, but the funny thing about it was we could. What, my family had money. You, we had a swimming pool and a sauna in our garden when I was a child. Yeah. And the f- fruit game was good, and so I was I was brought up to um, uh, as a sport kid. But but as you start to work in a market and you start getting strong you've got to remember we never had forklifts yeah so and we, I, I'm from the everything old Covent yeah, everything was everything was umped about put it on your head and I come from the old Covent Garden like yeah. we were like, my, my, like the film My Fair Lady was yeah. so the first time I was in Covent Garden you could smell it you could smell the street and uh, the first time I ever I, I my dad would say go down to uh, go down to the growers park and go and order the, the uh, spec Bramleys. Now, people don't buy Bramley no. cookers today. But in them days, he say, right, run down to the growers and ask him, for, say, Bobby Aaron wants the spec Bramleys. So I'd run down here. And as I get down here, where the growers was, there was a a, a sausage and a cup of tea uh, 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 caravan. But you go there to have your toilet, to have a poo. So, excuse me. You go downstairs, give the man a, a chip. <laughs> a chip was a, a was a shilling. Right. Because you've got to remember, in the old common God, everything was Cockney slang. Right, yeah. <laughs> Nothing was spoken. Everything was Cockney slang. Like, you know, a, a carpet was fruppence. Yeah. And a, a, a diner was a shilling. And a tosh room was two and, two, two and, a, two, two and six. Yeah. Right, that was yeah. a tosharoon. So everything was in Cockney slang. And I used to go down there, and then you'd find... And it was the first time I ever smelt it. And I used to watch the drunks, because they're, they're down and outs. They're down and outs. And I used to look to... to, to and it was the first time I ever see a, a, a young man. He came out of a club called The Middle Earth. I'll never forget it. And all the hippies used to go there. Right, and he had his work still in his in his, in his arm, and he had wet his pants, and I was watching. I was looking at the works because it's like looking at a bit of works. It's like looking at a gun for a child, 
you know, you think good, you think, you think. That's illegal. If the, do you understand what I mean? Yeah. If you know, when these people, these people say, "Oh, I, I have a joint at home," well, children know. Yeah, children know that their their parents are rolling a joint. They know that's not the cigarette that come out of a box. They're not like, stupid. They're not stupid. Yeah. So they get the scent. So they, but they know it's not right. And then they know that their parents, their 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 their, their, their personalities change. Yeah. It, it, so they yeah. know children sense it so I was looking at this this young man and he and and, and, and then he and I I, got, I was smelling all the down and outs and it's quite amazing while we're on this subject it's quite amazing I've been with my wife for over 40 years over 40 years but years ago when we first started courting right I was walking along the street and uh my wife is from a council estate, right? Now, my wife's very ordinary, you know what I mean? So, we're walking along the street, and she said, there's my dad over there. So I went, over there? So she went, yeah. So I looked around, I said, I can't see no one. So she said, look again. So I went, who, the tramp? She said, yes, my dad, don't wake him up. Right. So I walked over and I put a ching in his in his in his his they don't put, tramps don't take their shoes off. Yeah. Right? So I put it in his pocket and I crept out. I didn't wake him up. And Wally, his that was his name, he had ginger. All my wife and my children got ginger hair, green eyes. And and Wally was a replica of my wife, but just in a man. But he was a tramp, like, you know. And the funny thing, why I'm telling you this is years later, I always remember her saying to me, Tramps love Liam Perrin's sauce. They love Liam Perrin's sauce in their soup. I went, why, Mandy? Why? He went, it's just the 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 the, the cocktail of soup with Liam Perrin's, and they like the pepper taste of it. I went, really? I went, I don't understand it. And years later, years later, when I was a down and out, when I got the beard, I got the thing. I I turned round one day. In a in a window, and not only was I did I look like Wally because you have got ginger hair. That's too, obviously you know you're a down and out. You got a beard. You got a, you know, and I was shaking because I was cold. I was in the embankment. And then you get a, a tea lorry come round. They give the down and outs. And I had this particular day. I think I had soup. And as I turned round, I looked. I thought, goodness gracious, I've now become Wally. Which was her dad. Yeah. Same thing. But lo and behold, what do you think I was doing? Putting a Liam Perrins <laughs> in the suit. Yeah. Isn't that funny? Yeah. I'll never forget that moment. Yeah. So going back to going back to uh so we we we've been together for since we was since my wife was a young girl, we've always been together. We've drunk together and used together. We're both in recovery. Which is quite strange because yeah. a lot of people don't know how to... When they clean up, you've got to understand, cocaine goes with a sexual thing. Do you understand what yeah. I mean? And so most Saturday nights, you're, you're used together, right? And then after years, when they, when you do get clean, you don't know how to communicate, especially sexually, yeah. because you've always relied on drugs or alcohol. So then to be clean and try to love someone without a sub, uh, 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 Substance, uh, uh, yeah. it's a big, big, big move. You know, it's a big coup. So a lot of people don't stay together. Yeah. When they've used together, they don't always stay together. They don't like that person. What made them gel is the drug yeah. or drink. But when you clean up, you've got to find other things. And in that way... And let me just tell you something. When you also clean up, like I, when I cleaned up, a lot of my family were at it, and they're getting bundles of dough. So they drive, drive in, with a, like a, with a Range Rover with all tellies in. Yeah. You, and, 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 and and of course, we're human. And and you think you, there's an element that you think so good. It, uh, I. And, and I had a caravan, a little caravan, and Mandy seen me one day, she said, listen, if you go back, everything you're trying to get, 
you, you won't achieve the, 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 the sobriety that we're trying to get to. She said, and it's the, the, what they say in, in AIA, they say people, places and things. You have to cut out where you used to hang out, or maybe that might be friends. Or it might be sometimes it has to be the other person. We didn't just get clean. I said to her one day, listen, we can't live together because we're 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 blowing each other up. We we just can't we're not we can't make this. Yeah. But I've got to get clean. I said, Do you find it easier to get clean without me around you? I said I can't get clean when I find it easy. I have to find it hard. Everything in my life is back to front. Why do you think that is? I'm quite a slow learner. And I'm quite... I think that I have to learn from my mistakes, which has always been my way. I, 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 definitely, I know if you showed me something, you show me it once, nine times out of ten I'll get it. But I didn't have to do it my way, yeah. and that is like that in life. Like I wasn't a really great dad in the in, years ago because I was never there. Years ago, as long as you put money indoors, the men had to find the money for indoors, and that gave you freedom. That was your kind of role complete. Correct. But if I went there to come home after a few days of being drinking, like say I've been out for about four days, the key to get indoors was it your street door keys. It was I'd have a couple of grams of Charlie, which I knew my wife liked, a bottle of wine or, or a bottle of vodka, and I'd, I'd knock on the door, and then the, but the cocaine would get me in. Are you with me? Yeah. So that was why we probably stayed together, because when after four days the temper, you're only in a bad mood the first day, sort of when you haven't turned up for something, and I mean to, to turn up for Chris didn't turn up for anything. Um, you, you, you just wasn't a dad that was present. You was like all alcoholics, selfish. Yeah. And so into that selfishness comes, I think, when you have children, it's very strange that they get in the way. They get in the way, like you know, say you've been up on it all night. Then they, t then the the, the the birds start tweeting, and you put draw the curtains, and you've got to be straight. Well, a lot of addicts stick their children in front of a television. Yeah. Right, they do. They ain't... They, it, it, but I didn't... I would not my, my case. I just wasn't there. Yeah. And you got to remember, in the fruit game, there were the pubs in the old market in Covent Garden. The pubs would be open from five till nine. That was, that was before I was an alcoholic. At the end of the night shift, wasn't it? Yeah. But, like, in, in the new Covent Garden, the apples and pears upstairs, I'll be waiting for that man to arrive uh, the, 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 the governor yeah. and at 3 o'clock I'd walk in there and I'd go give me a port and brandy but the port and brandy art fastens your art so that would take a full way all fear as I was running up the stairs I would physically want to be sick because I knew once I had that port and brandy I'd be drinking for the rest of the day but even then I hadn't come to the end of the road so Going back to going back, uh, we 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 work. I work in the, in in the market, and they used to bring two lorry loads of gear home, two great big lorries, and that would have ten pallets on each lorry, and all that had to be unloaded physically on a bar around a corner and unloaded down to stairs where the coal pot was underneath the market, underneath the road. So everything was physical. So your strength was the strength of free men, yeah. because everything. And there was a little man that my dad had. He was like a, he was a, he was a, he was a grass, the fella, really. What he was, he he was a, but he was little and fat, and his legs were, his legs were like that, and he could carry. He was a horrible, uh, but but my dad loved him, and he loved my old man because he was, but he was so strong, and so I never let him ever like carry more than me. Yeah. Are you with me? So I, I, like your strength with you was through anger. If that makes any sense. So anyway, um, so we was very. It was very physical in the old days. No one ever worried about cold or you like you. You just no. You didn't even feel the rain. You never wore a 
Someone said, wouldn't wear a, a, a wetsuit. It's like an Irishman being in a hole with a hut, uh, digging an hole. They'd wear, buy a brand new suit on a, on a Saturday and wear it to work on a Monday. Well, it's the same. You know, we would just be workaholics. You know, and you don't have days off years ago. Yeah. You just used to work. And if you had a hangover, you'd have a livener. So, something like that. So as the years went past and... and, uh, and while I was earning money, uh, my family started to realise that um, that we was drifting apart. Um, they could see you had a problem. They didn't know it was through uh, cocaine. They really just thought it was alcoholism. Excuse me. Anyway, cut a long story short. I think I've got a bit of... That's right, I've got a bit of burden. When I come out, my my uh, uh, my um, my dad turned around to me and went, "Listen, I don't like you. I don't know who you are, and I don't know who you've become. All I can say is I just don't like the man that you have, that you are now. And 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 uh, you're someone who I don't know. It's and, got to be hard to hear, isn't it? Especially from a straight goer. Yeah. My father ain't a villain." My father's a workaholic. He'd been in the war, as I said before. And as tough a man as he was, he's a, my family are very... My, my, my mummy and daddy are very honest. So you get an honest man, he talks to you like that, and he was the one man in my life I've been scared of. Right. Through love. And, and my mum. I, I, you know, I, 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 I loved my mummy. And... And... Um, and um, so when a man doing those two, I I I don't like you. I don't know who you are. And my my family was we was drifting apart. So he said, "Listen," he said, "I, I can see where you're going to wind up, and and and, and that's, this is the road you're on." He said, "But look, here's some keys. Go to the villa. We had a villa in Marbella in Port Bedouce, right on the beach. It was beautiful, beautiful villa. Villa. He said, go and do the villa. This is before the gangsters got there, right? This is before that." So he said, go and live there and come back, if ever you come back. Or he said, but before that, before that happened is, I got myself into trouble when I was around about, I reckon about, I was about 20 years old. And, uh, and I, was, I was in the old bailey and uh, the fellow beside me had just killed someone, and the other fellow bes to the left had just, for the crime that we was in there for, had just committed it again. So the three of us are there, and they said, and caught five of the old Bailey, and, and uh, we was up for something quite serious. Uh, well, it was, it, it was uh, anyway, why barrister come down to me? He said to me, listen, I can cut a deal for you. He said, you weren't caught on the scene. You weren't caught with any clothes. Like they ain't got no evidence on you. They, 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 it's only word of mouth that you're, you're here. You haven't said anything. They can't really put anything on you. Yeah. So I can cut a deal for you. I went, cut a deal, what's that mean? So he said, well, you can walk out of this court today. I went... That sounds great. I went, well, so we all get out. He went, well, they've been done for murder, and the other one's been done again. So I went, well, what does that mean? He went, well, they was caught there. They, the, they, they, the they, 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 was, they were stabbed, and so they went to hospital. But, and so they can't get out of this. Yeah. He said, but they spent an awful lot of money bringing these people back to this country, putting them in a hotel, and, and, and so, so and, but th they can't get out of it, but you can. You wasn't caught on the night. They went to hospital, they was caught on the night. He said, but, I went, he said, but there's a deal for you. I went, but there ain't a deal for the free. He went, no. I went, I can't have a deal. He went, he said, I'm talking about getting you. I went, I can't do that. I said, my family name is, is, is everything. I said, I, could, I can't do that. I, 
Did you but, feel that you'd be grassing? Is yeah, that how you yeah, felt? yeah, I can't, couldn't do that. I said, I, I, I can't do that. So anyway, uh, so uh, later on, later on, later on, uh, when I was allowed to, when I was allowed to, which was l l later, I got on a plane and I went to America. And then from America, I started to travel. And I, 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 you know, I, was, I hitched out all around America, working in gymnasiums, working on a bio. That's the, the bio is New Orleans on the pipes. Right. You know, down on the pipes. That's where all the all the villains go. Police ain't. You can't, there's no law. They have a sheriff goes down there. He's got a gun on his hip. You know what I mean? Big boots, like you know. It's 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 New Orleans, but it's the back. Yeah. It's where all, every if you're a fugitive, poli like it's you like can self policed. Go, correct. But you know, like a sheriff might come in. But. Uh, Anyway, I was at the Mardi Gras, and a guy said, "Look, there's some work down on the bio," and then I and then I, I bummed all around, working in you know different places in America, different jobs. Uh, uh, and then one day, I think we was down in uh, down in um, must have been down in Texas, and I was travelling with a cousin of mine, and he. It, Few, now we've been away for a few years. We've been away for a few years, and we're down in Texas, in the, in the Alamo, where the John Wayne film is. Yeah. So we're there, we're having a beer. He said, "I'm I'm doing a left tomorrow." I went. So was, I said, "What's that mean? What do you mean you're doing a left?" He said, "I'm going." To, he said, "I'm going south." I went. What, what are you talking about, Lawrence? What are you talking about? He went. I'm going down to see Ronnie Biggs. That's in Brazil. Right, so I went. We're we're in we're in Texas. He went. Yeah, he said I'm going through. He said I'm leaving tomorrow, and I'm going through Central America, down into South America. I'm going to, to Ronnie Biggs. So I went. Well, what about me? Where, where am I in this? He went. Well, you can do whatever you like. I said, Well, I can't go back to England. I said I'm not allowed back there. Uh, it, it, uh, I'll get, I'll get, my collar fell. He said, so well, do you want to come? Because I'm going. I went, how much money are we holding between us? Because we'd been working. We'd been away for about a few years now. Yeah. And we're close. So he said, well, we're holding about so much. So I went, all right, let's go down. Anyway, so we start. We're going to Mexico. Guatemala, El Salvador, all the way down. Anyway, I was in Colombia when I was about young, real young, 20. I was down in Colombia when I like, but they didn't know what cocaine was then. You know, like it was there, but it hadn't become Americanized. Yeah. Right, it hadn't yeah. become, become dollarized. You know, there weren't this bloke called El, Sal, El Escobar and all that nonsense. Yeah. You understand what I mean? It yeah. was, it had, it was still in the leaf, it, uh, but it hadn't become a, 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 an American drug, or a, 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 the it, you, they used to call it a champagne drug. You know, when I first started taking it, you had to go to a certain place. You couldn't get it in. A, you had to go to, to the elite. Yeah to get it years yeah. ago when I was first started, you know. It's only certain it people... It wasn't as accessible no, as it no, is. No, it was a yeah. la carte <coughs> yeah. gear, you know what I mean, you know. Yeah. One minute you're taking a bit of pup, uh, like you know, maybe, you know, and all of a sudden you've got, you're in with the in crowd, if that yeah. makes any sense. You know, yeah. anyway, cut a long story short. We're down in Colombia, and... Um, but... On the way down, there was a big earthquake in Guatemala. I was in a bank, and everybody ran out the bank. Everybody ran out. And I thought, so what's going on? Because we're from London. We don't know that there's an earthquake. We don't know the grounds. We think it's an 18 bus going past. <laughs> you understand what I mean? You, you think the ground's moving, but you don't know we're in an earthquake. We're from London. Yeah. So all of the bank's empty. I thought, I can't believe this. <laughs> so anyway, then we, we, we moved on. 
and then we and then I, I finish up in a uh, I finish up in a, some back streets uh, in another country. I think I may where I'm now about maybe El Salvador. And uh, a, a woman down here takes. Oh, you got to remember I got ginger hair and freckles. So a, Mex- a Mexican woman, she's a, got gu- guns on her, runs a, a site. You can go and sleep there. Set of sleep, and you can shower. And she uh, wants me to get hold of her, right? So she's got, so she's, so I called her uh, Annie, Annie, uh, Annie Oakley, uh, 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 you know, the woman, the, the cowboy woman, yeah. you know, like that. that so, uh, so my, the fact, my, you know, she wants you to get hold of her. So I went, yeah, anyway, her boyfriend comes round uh, that night, and he's drunk, and he can see she had been playing up to me. He's got a great big machete. Huge, great big machete, and he, I think he's come down to sort me out. Right. But sh- he's come down with his dog, right? And they start arguing in Spanish. I don't know what's going. All of a sudden, you heard the guns going. She always had a gun on her, right? Because she run the place, and she had the bullets for like you know you. But they were. And anyway, she shot his dog, and he then she and then and he went. He went. No, I'm not having none of this. And he went. Well, we couldn't stop laughing. We thought it was hilarious. You know what I mean? That so. Why I'm telling you this story is, in them days, there weren't gangsters in El Salvador or Mexico and all all through the Central America, they was called bandidos. Right. They're, they're not, they're not gang- gangsters, only come from America. Yeah. Like, you know, from all that rap music. Yeah. Like, you know, which was on maybe a New York, uh, a New York dialogue. But down there, years ago, d- d- they... And all you heard about is a bandido, you know what I mean. So when that Ross Kemp done those those that journeys, yeah. or when he showed him on the road, I said, "I was turning around, Mandy. I go see that. That wasn't even that was called Highway One, and like it was the main highway. But they brought see how this table goes. You'd have it was all trees, so it's the main highway. And then but the, the say you was going down on the the, the bus would. To, to tell you going down on the the, the tyres would go over the overlap. Right. You know, so you go over. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. They, so it was Highway 1, but there ain't no highway. <laughs> There's just a bridge made of tree. Tree uh, fit. Yeah. Tree, you know what I mean? Yeah. Tight together. Trunks, yeah. yeah, tight together. So God knows how the, 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 the driver... Gets over the bridge, but he like they they do it every day. The plus, I guess they're a bit stoned, you know what I mean. But they do it. I guess the tequila's working, <laughs> and 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 but fuck, I knew my bottle was fu- like yeah, I thought fuck, I didn't look down. So like, you know, but so the, anyway, later later on, later on, we we finish up down in 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 uh, in Colombia. And my my who I'm travelling with, he, he's very handsome man. He had long blonde hair, and we're young. So all of a sudden we're 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 on this island. Uh, 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 we've gone onto an island. We're going to pick a tug up. So you have to go to San Andreas, which is an island from the mainland, over to the, to, to pick the tug. And we work our passage down to Brazil. So all of a sudden we're on the island. And I'll be old. He rumps the the local gangsters, misses. Right now we're in trouble. Yeah. Right yeah. now we're in trouble. Now these guys. Dive for a hundred feet down, so that their shoulders are like that. You know, I mean, they 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 they, they can dive without tanks on them, so they're just huge. So I said, we're in trouble here. They're gonna. They, and they, what they do, they cut. They go. The same people on the island go to school with the police. There isn't no. They are. They run the island. You know, so they chop you up, put you on another island. You're finished. Yeah. You know, it's Colombia. Your history. Yeah. So I said, we're in a bit of trouble here, aren't we? I said, they, they got the hump for you. I said, what are you, you rumping her? Well, rumping her. I went, I said, a million birds here. You've dicked a gangster's bird wife. So I said, I said, listen, we're all right. So I went, look, they ain't got the hump with you as much as they, with me as much as you. How much are we holding? So I said, look, you fly out. You have to get a, pl- a water plane, water plane. You fly out and I'll stay here. And uh, so... He flew out, and I knew that it was just, I, I could, it weren't so heavy for me, right? But I knew it was, it was just a time weren't, weren't right for them to do me, you understand? All of a sudden, one day I see this boat come in, 
into the into the thing. It was out a little bit, I, but looking at sea, it looks nearer. So I sit had like and all, in them days, you, all the insurance for boats was in in England. So it had it had the, uh, a, 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 but in the corner it was the Union Jack. So I had a Canadian flag, but with but all the insurance they got all the get insured in England for boats in the old days. We, we had the strongest insurance thing for right. for, for, for 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 the world. So and I see this union, I said, what? so I, I, I stripped her and I started swimming out. But as I'm swimming out, it's further than what <laughs> it's further than what. I, so I'm saying I'm drowning. They think I'm waving, <laughs> right? So I'm drowning. They're waving. <laughs> Finally, they throw a dinghy out. They come and get me. They, get, they say, what's, what's going What do you want? So I went, listen, I'm looking for some work. They said, do you know about boats? I said, I know everything about boats. I said, I'm, I, I'm a, I'm a, I've sailed most of my, my, like, you know. So, well, the Australian guys that are on the next island, he gets off. He's been with us for a, a few. He said he gets off, and and if you want to, you can come and do his. So if you meet us on the next island, over, you can take his job. So I went, all right, I'll do that. I'll meet you there. Well, I've never been on a boat in my life, right? Plus, I get seasick, right? First thing, <laughs> but the first thing that gave me away is they said go down into the, into the, uh, the, uh, the place where you <laughs> make and make a cup of coffee, right? The galley, the galley. Yeah, yeah. They said, go down and make a cup of coffee. So I went, all right, fair enough. So when I come back, I went, I can't find the milk anywhere. Well, you don't have milk on a boat. It's powdered milk. <laughs> so that gave me away for it straight away. That was the first lie. <coughs> then we start sailing out, and I don't know what nut, what I don't know what starboard is, and, and, and you know, I don't yeah. know anything about it. So, but what gave me away? I don't know any of the knots. Right, so now they know they've picked up a Joey, and and they're, they're like, you know, he's, they're in trouble because they, who is this guy? They can't. Like, I'm already, we're out in sea, so I'm being sick. Like, so anyway, cut a long story short, we start diving around these little islands. Anyway, that particular night, we got some lobster and went to a little place because we're on the catamaran. Then we'd throw the dinghy out and we'd go and, and go to an island and cook the lobster, boil it, boil it. They said, listen, we've got to put you off the next island. I went, why? He said, well, today with all the sharks, you was in amongst the sharks and, and, and uh, you could risk our life. I went, what are you talking about? I went, I was the only one whose bottle never went. I said, <laughs> they said, it's because of you, the sharks were coming in. I went, you was the ones who were saying, let's go, let's go. They said, yeah, your flippers were going like that and they could tell, but it's like you get on an horse. The, the, the animal can sense it. He said, they could see your flippers. So anyway... By the time we got to the next place was quite a journey, and they took a liking to me. You know what I mean? Anyway, we wound up sailing for a long time together, and both of them were very wealthy and had retired. So we so we sailed from there, and then we finish up in Kingston, Jamaica. We finish up so, and then he says to me, oh, "I'm there for a few days. They go." The doc who, 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 who's very wealthy, goes back to his place in Canada. And and Chris Gossett, who was a Jamaican, uh, uh, who owned lots and lots of land here, he comes to see me. He rides around in a little mini moat. He said to me, what are you doing from here? So I said, I'm doing nothing. I'm just travelling. He said, look, he said, the, the Jamaica looks like going... On its own now, we're, we're, the England, England's losing it. It's becoming uh, on it. It's, it's got its own dependent. You know what I mean? We're, it's not English rule anymore. And if you see all the roads have got holes in them and everything like that, and it's a, a big takeover now, where they, they're taking back their, their land and taking back the farmland, and things are looking bad. He said, and I've tried to get all my family money up with agricultural stuff like tractors and, and uh, caterpillars. And he said, but our wealth, our diamonds, and I'm, uh, that I'm being watched by the secret police and I can't get no money up. He said, would you take something out for me? I went, he said, oh, I need you to take a, a suitcase out for, for me. I said, well, you want me to take it to? He said, Ontario, Canada. He said, would you smuggle this bag out? So I went, sure. 
I said, I've got nothing better to do. I'm going nowhere. I didn't know. I said, look, don't open the bag. What I don't see, yeah. I don't know. And then I, my, you know, I, I, I'll be, it don't matter to me. I just don't want to know what's in it. I'll just smuggle whatever you want in the bag I'll do. Did you have any kind of suspicions? Or no, not really, not really. And I didn't care. When you're a young boy, you just don't care. You've got, you know, nothing, you've got fearless especially for the, the way I've been living for the last previous few years. Yeah. You know, you're, 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 you're fearless. So anyway, year, I did fly out to take all this. Anyway, years later, in, in Ells Court, they, you have to come to Ells Court years ago to buy boats, right? Like, that's where the big boat show was in Ells Court years ago. And so they come to meet me in the market, all the, the, these people, right? And then they come to dinner in our house that night in Kingston Hill. And then my mummy asked them the multi-million pound question. She said, tell me something. She said, is it true that Jeffrey took out, the, she, he went, the suitcase? He went, oh, he said, 100%. He said, he, all our wealth, all our diamonds and our wealth was in that bag. So my dad's now, because I always thought I'd exaggerated, you know. So they said, well, how did you know that he would take it? That, like, they said, because... There's a lot of things that your your son. He said, but one thing he is, he, he he's an honest man, and and we knew that he wouldn't steal that. We you, you you when you've been on a boat so close with each other, we knew Jeffrey wouldn't uh, steal that. Uh, so we we just, and it would have been gone by the police anyway. Uh, let me say, so like it's better to bet back at what an all set we that, that we know, know yeah. you know. So they said, so it was it's true. So they said, oh, absolutely. We we knew that Jeffrey wouldn't let us down. And then Jeffrey, as he told you, he'd worked from the roads in Canada with us on the on the farms, building the roads, and he stayed with us for a few years. And then we sent him on to California when he wanted to go. They said, he's told us, we just didn't know, you know. So getting on to the, the rest part of the, the, the drinking now. So when you've been that wild... Coming back to England, I was still looking for that. I was always travelling, but I was never. I was still looking for that adventure, you know. And I should have done the marijuana trail. You go down and, and you should have go to Australia, but instead I went to South Africa. So instead of going on the marijuana trail down to South through Thailand to Australia, I went the other way and I went to South Africa to live for a few years, quite a few years. Which was I should have gone on to Australia, but that's the way that's life. So, this getting onto the alcoholism is you you start getting working in the street, you start getting frustrated. You don't even know you. Then all of a sudden you have got a wife. Then you have got children. Then you have got a mortgage. Before you know where I am, I'm strangled. Yeah. I'm not used to this life. I weren't cut out to be a dad. I'm a dad today. I weren't a dad then. So, all of a sudden, I still loved adrenaline. But, you know, you can't have adrenaline when you've got a family. It, 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 it just didn't... I, 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 and plus, I used to be in a loner. When you travelled that much, I used to sleep on the floor. Never slept in a bed. So you're used to sleeping on the floor, which people don't realise. They just think... I was so used to years of sleeping on the floor, being rough, you know... It became second nature. So to have, a, to have responsibility was a hard thing to, to take. Now, all of a sudden, you're a dad, children, you've got the business, the old man's getting old. My mum didn't want me to travel no more to take over the business. So the drink started coming in, the drugs. So and all of a sudden, I, 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 I was, I got, I've become quite wealthy in my own rights. I become, when I say quite wealthy, quite wealthy. And then I had all the money in, 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 and the, the property game went, it just went overnight. So I came out to my wife and I said, listen, um, the, the property game's gone and all that money was invested and, we're, and, uh, and I'm skinned. So she said, well, we own the house, don't we? And I went, the house was a part of the business. So she said, we don't even own this. And she sat on a table like this, thick table, right, great big thick table. And as she sat on it, somehow it broke in half. Now, my wife ain't a big woman, right? You know what I mean? The table just broke and she fell through the middle. And I looked her on the floor and I realised the, the seriousness of 
not uh, being on the floor, I couldn't even pick. I was like st stunned in the realization is now I've got no money. I've got to go work selling apples and oranges for the rest of my life. Or what do I do? And I couldn't even pick her up. I just walked out the house. And I think the, the drinking and, and, and I didn't, the, the, after, it was so hard to go and then sell apples and oranges and talk about a pounds, shillings and pence. Yeah. When you've been in the property game talking about big chunks of dough. Yeah. Which it was good in Fulham because you could turn one house into two flats. Yeah. They put a basement in it, put a, a, a roof thing, and all of a sudden everybody was turning houses, houses into two flats. Yeah. So everybody in, our, in, in, in certain parts of London were getting big dough out of convert, and the government, Margaret Thatcher, was giving you money. Right. Are you with me? Right. So we was getting money for, to do these conversions. So anyway, the drink started, and... Uh, and before I knew where I was, it had come out of it. It had become out of hand. So I went in, a, a bloke in the market said, look, do you want to have a, an implant? He said, it stopped you. It's a win six-month window, the antibuse, but they cut it in your belly. So when I had three, three different times, I went in for an implant, but that didn't work. That, that didn't work at all. I, l I looked for the... Um, sobriety in AA and I just couldn't get this and the funny thing about it was by that time all my cousins were in AA and they'd all got it they were in sobriety so they're finding it easy to get sober I'm one of them people that took years to get sober I didn't get it just in AA I just didn't walk into an AA meeting all of a sudden everything fell apart my marriage uh, we lo they lost the house my wife had to move back in with her mum. All the children's beds, the toys, everything had to go. Like, you know, you go and get all the children seeing all their toys just disappear. And then they move back into a little council flat, like, you know, all over, all a lot of them, and, their, and her, you know, her sister. So she went one way, and I finished up on the streets for about four years. And funny enough, once you once everything's gone... Yeah, you know, if you went out and got a ticket on your car now, you'd have the ump. If you lost your phone, you'd have the ump. But once you ain't got a car, or a, there ain't a phone, because who's going to phone you? You're a tramp. You're a down and out. So, plus if anyone come near me, when I was squatting, if anyone come near me, I'd go, what do you, what, you come around and mock me? I remember being slung out of a squat one day, and it was a doctor's next door to me. And everybody come out to see the tramp, I was handcuffed, being slung out. Yeah, like, and once they slung me out, and they took me to the police station. Like when I got released, I just went back to a squat. They built, boarded it all up, and I got a shovel. Lloyd did the back door, and went and lived there for about another eight months. You know, just. And the funny thing about this, when you're in the eye of the, of the storm, you don't know there's a storm going on. Because you can't feel it, you're completely numb. And one morning, it was a sunny morning, it was really hot, and I thought, I went and I looked around me and I went, you know what, Jesus? This ain't so bad. If this is as much as you're going to throw at me, I can handle this. I went, everything's gone, but Lord, I'm still. I, I, I feel quite sane. I've got my. I've got. I, it, this ain't as bad. Having nothing is quite freeing. Not having to find. You, for you, if you've got to go and find a mortgage, or you've got children, or you've got a, a, something to. Um, to a, something to, to pay, a, a bank thing. But when you've got nothing, there's nothing to fear. Yeah. It becomes completely. You're in the eye of the storm. You can't feel a thing. And it's quite freeing. The funny thing about it is, when nothing, you've got nothing, it, 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 that means nothing. I thought, you know what? It's a nice day. It's the first time I'd even noticed the weather. But then once you become a tramp for a long time, you know what the, 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 the time is because you see children going to school. 
or coming home. You hear the, the traffic changes. You become, you don't need a, you ain't got a watch. Tramps ain't got watches because there's no timeless. Yeah. You know, if you get wet, the clothes dry on you. You know, it's quite strange for you. Your, your thinking becomes completely the opposite way round. You know, if you, you know, you're t- it's timeless uh, because you've got no, no, you ain't got to go to work. You haven't got to do anything. You just ex- trying to exist. And actually, sometimes that's quite freeing. Yeah. I found that quite okay. I didn't find that hard at all. What I did find hard was when I came back into the real world, how hard it was then to 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 settle down and to want to become a dad or to want to love my wife again. And then we had to start. We had to start again from from you know uh, basically from the beginning and, and that was hard it was also hard to to and I've got to tell you another thing and which is a fact it took me about five years not to want to drink I ain't one of them people that got in AA and like loved I, I that well, that's not true what is true is I went how I got clean is I went to loads and loads of meetings and then one day about and we was down in Brighton. We went to a CA convention, and uh, and in NA or AA, they don't like the word Jesus, right? They don't like the God word, really. Uh, like you know, they, they, but I went to a CA meeting in in an hotel in the Hilton Hotel, yeah. and who does a chair was a mafian gangster, a right. mafia gangster, and he looked like he just jumped out of. Uh, uh, with Robert De Niro and Ralph Pacino, uh, uh, like the Goodfellas, yeah. his hair was slick. He looked like a you know, like a Miami gangster. And then he told his story about how his dad was shot in front of him and how he become a how he become a gangster and and his life story and he, and he stopped voyage through through uh, into recovery. And then we, I was sitting with my wife. And we were about about. Five or five hundred people there, something like that. You know, this is the like first CA meeting convention. I've been to them a couple of right. times. Yeah, yeah, but this is the at the beginning. They've had been going for years yeah. now. But I'm talking about the very first one, right? In that, oh, this is the first CA meeting in Brighton. Yeah, convention. Yeah. I mean, c- convention in the Hilton Hotel. And all of a sudden, he gets right. He does his chair, and I, I'm I'm spellbound by him about how he looks. And then he says, look, this is years ago, he quotes the prayer of footsteps in the sand, right? Well, I'd never heard it before. And he went, Jesus, he said, Lord, uh, every time I was in trouble, I see there was only one footsteps in the sand. And he went, my darling, it was at them times that I bent down and carried you. The one, the one footstep, the footsteps in the sand is me. Because that's when I bent in, when you was having trouble in your life, I bent down and carried you. I thought, you know what, the Lord's carried me so many times, and all of a sudden, as the tears come down here, right? I was four years in then, four years in. I turned to Mandy, and I went, I made it. She went, what? And I was like, I I I hadn't cried for many many years. And I weren't crying, but yeah, the tears were rolling down my face. I went, we've made it. Don't worry. It's all right now. She went, really? I went, yeah. I said, no one ever talks about God in these meetings, Mandy. And it was God that got me clean. And the gift, this our sobriety is a gift. It's a, The AA is the tools of sobriety. The gift comes from God. You can call God whatever you want. Me, I'm a Roman Catholic, so it's Jesus, obviously. But you're you're Jewish, so you've got your own God, and that's that's okay. It's not about who's who's what, and it's 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 that old saying. It's what God of under your own understanding, understanding, which we understand. Everybody understands. But when that gangster used the word, because he was Italian, he's an Italian gangster. He uses the word Jesus. And because I'm a Catholic, the Irish part of us, I went, Mandy, 
it's okay, we've a mate, we've a, we've a, we've arrived. Because I then heard it. They don't say it enough in recovery. They don't realise that the gift is from God. And that is key. Because everybody thinks you go to AA, well, it, the, 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 the lessons are taught in AA. The tools are from AA. But the gift is from the higher power. And, I, and let me tell you another thing. How I know that's true is because when some people say, oh, I, haven't, I, haven't, I don't like that word, God, let me tell you why I do. Because when I'm, when I'm scared, or when I was lonely, and when I never had a family, I used to argue with him, and he used to cuddle me. It's lonely being a tramp. It's lonely being a, 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 a junkie. It's lonely when you can't come off drugs. It's, it's, it's lonely. And, 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 and you soon get on your knees in and say, Can, if there's someone out there, help me. In that time right. of crisis, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But they don't ever say that. Yeah. They don't man up and say that. But I'll tell you something. Whenever I'm in trouble, I soon know where to turn. And in my life, because I, there's been all different stages of growing up, and let me let me come to an end here. With I am a, I, everything I've ever done, which I started, is I've fe, I've done the opposite way of other people. I've always done life back to front. Today, I've been with my wife for over forty years. I'm twenty three years clean. But what I'm getting at is. I wasn't a good dad. I wasn't this. I wasn't that. Today, it's easy to say we we. But we, we, I've grown up now. Bit late to grow up, but I've grown up. Some men never grow up. Yeah. As long as they got an hole up their arris, they don't grow up. They're still talking about. They, people, loads and loads of people going in the pub, still talking that same crap, of, of what, or what they're talking about the weather or the, the, the football. Or, I never went in a pub to talk about football. I wasn't a part of the dark team, the football team of the pub. I went in there to drink, use, and the pubs that I used to go in, it wouldn't be surprising if the wind, the, 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 wind, like the chair goes through the window. Because this it's like an Irish, uh, 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 you never know what was going to happen. It's like uh, uh, more like a sort of cowboy scene. Uh, and And to be quite honest with you, it took a long time to change. Yeah. And this, alco- this, this, this uh, it's called altered attitudes, uh, AA. Altered att- and, like, you have to do a 180% turnaround on how you used to think. And honesty is key. Not a lot of people can be honest. Uh, honesty is key, but not a lot of people can find it. Yeah. They don't, they, 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 they lift, they lose, they can get sober. But they ain't, they, they, they've lost one ingredient. The meat in the soup is the honesty. The honesty and they can't, they can't swallow it. Okay. They get the juice, but they can't swallow the meat. And the honesty is the key. Has there been, <clears throat> has there been any times in recovery where you've been in an environment which perhaps may be an environment from what you, what you were up to in your younger days that perhaps hasn't kind of bothered you, but you know, drink comes out or whatever, and 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 it's become a problem. Is there any kind of situations where where you've been around drink? No, drink. Uh, let me explain something to you. Uh, I I uh, I always think about uh, look, when I used to walk into a pub, I never would order up one glass of Guinness because it's got to settle. So as as the barman would go to walk away, I'll go, Joe, Joe, come back. Put another one down, cause one one set, one settling. I need another one, and I used to bang two Guinness in like a shotgun going into my brain. Are you with me? Or a port and brandy, which I said. But so you have to wait for the Guinness to go down. Excuse me. But cocaine or drink, that I, I don't. Uh, you could put me in a room, but tell you the truth, in truthfulness. Firstly, I don't hang about with a lot of people anymore. I've changed. I guess they think I'm boring. I think they're boring. 
I don't gel with a lot of people now. Like, like I, I don't. I've been hurt by a lot of good friends. I've been hurt by them. They don't live up to their name. Anybody can come here and do this, this, this talk. But let's go and see what they're like. Uh, like what they're like at home. Let's see how much money they put into their family. And I'll talk about all other people. When I say their family, I'm talking about the Joe on the street. I'm talking about the, the tramp on the street. Anybody can talk. Anybody can say, oh, I'll do this for that church. I know people that know that back Bible back to front. But they're a con merchant. Of course they know the Bible. It's like a, a, a map into... They, they network people. Like a map to manipulation, isn't it? And you've yeah. seen it in AA years ago, like where they, they all of a sudden they turned it into earning money. Yeah. Instead of just going to AA, they turned it into a business. Yeah. You know, I mean, I've watched that. I've, we've watched everything. We was there. We wouldn't say we was there at the beginning, but we was beginning of our of our era of, of things where it changed. So there's. I went to answer what you just said. No, it don't. It don't bother me if people drink. Actually, I quite. If my daughters drink, I go and get them drunk. I, I don't care if the girls drink. All my girls are drunk grown up now but I'll be the first one when we walk in I'll go give them a uh, give them a bottle of you know get a bottle of champagne give them a bottle of champagne and uh, you know if they, or if their boyfriends are with them I'll say give, get us a bottle of brandy over it with the boys you know for their husband like you know what I mean get us a bottle of brandy on the table you know what I mean I drink like how I would get them like how I would drink Yeah. you know what yeah. I mean a bottle of Remy bottle of champagne you know someone said I was with some they said are we going to book some that Prevecco, Prevecco, I thought, like, in the old days, you'd go and get a pro You know, in the old days, you'd go and get a proper bottle of champagne. <laughs> they, they're all, they're, they're, a lot of people wouldn't know where we've been. It was it was fun. Uh, and those days are gone. Everybody wants to be a sofa gangster selling cocaine from there, for like, on a, on a, you know, they're sofa gang. They don't, they're not true tough guys. They talk a lot because they've seen it on laptop, yeah. or or. But in the old days, the first thing my my mum said to me, Jeffrey, remember the three wise monkeys: you seal, you hear all, you say nothing. I go, okay, mum, I got that. She she, you know, uh, and 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 it's quite strange. It, it, no, I, to be honest with you, today I don't deal with a lot of. Uh, I, I train, I train on my own. I I I I pray. I go to the mass. I like that part of. I go to AA, or or, or I, I don't mind NACA. They don't bother me. I go to meetings. Should I say say it like that? Uh, I I I found it hard um, when I look at people. And some people I look at my, uh, 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 now my, my, who discuss me on on different things, but uh, 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 they they discuss me because they didn't live up to the to what we was what we we're what we're about. Yeah. Does that make any sense? Yeah. You know, yeah. you know they 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 talk it, but they don't act it. But that's enough of that. Like uh, I just want to. Uh, and if you if you were going to give one bit of advice, just to finish up, Jeff, one bit of advice to anyone watching that's in that in that position where you were trying to make that transition into recovery, someone with long term recovery like yourself, is there one tip that you would give someone just to try and get them over the line? Well, the, the the answer to that is just do bundles of meetings. That that's the key. Bundles of meetings. Don't boggle yourself down with like trying to. Don't take on too much. Keep it in the day. But you know what was a good thing for me to do is to get that that seven thirty early morning meeting because then you started your day the AA way. Yeah. Are you with yeah, me? Yeah. If I could get that early morning meeting, but what no one knows is before I leave the house. Nick, 
I put on, I asked for God's armour. Before so I go, your armor before you leave I house. asked for God's armour. Before I leave that front door, every morning, I put the holy water on and I asked for God's armour and for some dignity. And, and, and you see, years ago, there was so much money Things weren't with a card, right, or, or a laptop. Things you, you took a man on his honesty, his word, and you don't see that today. Uh, you, you, not, not, not in the old days. You, 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 you stood by your word. You know, I don't see that a lot now. The old days have gone, and somewhere in that, so have I gone. Like you're a thing, you're uh, uh, somewhere. Sometimes I think I'm a thing of the past, because I don't see that manlyhood anymore. That strength, the inner strength of what a man. You're not looking at a drunk anymore. You're looking at a man that, and I and I, and some days I I get I get very claustrophobic of life, responsibility. Um, I'm very lucky I am. I'm, uh, I've got a terrific family around me, and they 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 give me. But I I still I still love adrenaline, you know what I mean. I still love that adrenaline buzz. Uh, but to answer, just going back to what you do, the question you answered me is the key for for that is to get into an early morning meeting. You said early morning meeting. And, and you know another funny thing is is to go and make the tea. Humble yourself. I'll tell you a very funny quick story yeah. about that. When I first came into meetings, there were the commitments going up, and they were saying, so who wants to put the chairs out, who wants to make the tea? So I put my hand up for the tea. So when I first started going to meetings, but I only took the tea commitment because I thought I was going to get tips. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't work, did it? But yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Brought back, brought back a memory. Strange journey, this, it's isn't it? Really strange, strange journey. Strange journey. And the funny thing, you find the find the answers where where you you, 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 you something changes, doesn't it? The furniture changes, and all of a sudden you find a way through. Yeah, there was one part that I never told you, uh, uh, which is quite quite a, b a big thing. Uh, is when I told you that we went to live in Spain in Marbella. Well, I, we went into a club one night, and uh, and um, I think I think Mandy had lost the drugs or something. I know I had. I knew. I knew I, I, we, anyway, I wound up having a row with a bouncer, a couple of bouncers, and they asked me to leave. Anyway, so I, 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 there was a bit, bit of a, a, an argument, and I walked out of the club. So Mandy said, "Shall I drive?" I went, "No, I'll drive." So anyway. Uh, and we, we lived over the mountain, uh, over the mountain. We come out, of, uh, it was that club was called Sergeant Peppers. It was where all the, everybody used to go in them days on the main high street. Uh, but there, in, now there's a, a a barrier through the mi middle of the road. The port that you've got to have the port yeah, pass. Yeah, well, they never, years through. ago, they never had that. Yeah. So I come out of Sergeant Peppers, and I, 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 I take the keys off her, and we start driving over the mountains. Anyway, the next thing I know, the next thing I know is that I'm I'm upside down. I don't remember the, the drive or the, the, the crash. I don't remember that. But the next thing that I know is that I'm being cut out of the car. I'm upside down and I'm being cut out of the motor. But it's a concertina. It's completely around me, the whole I'm in in a sh the, like a little shell, like a bubble, like being in that bottle. Yeah. You're inside, but everything around you is caved in. So they cut me out, and I get out. And, and, and in them days, they used to have the funds on happy days, yeah. right? Happy days, I right? Love that. So as I get out, because I'm uh, uh, the uh, I've come to. It was like I must have got knocked out. As the motor rolled, as the motor rolled, I must have got knocked out. And I've got when they've cut me out, I've got out, and there ain't a thing wrong with me. I ain't got a scratch on me. That's so I, st in fear, you start laughing, like you, you become hysterical, like yeah. laughing. Yeah. So it, <laughs> I 
hey, the funds is cool. The funds is cool. Look, not a, not a scratch on me. Like, you know, I'm looking around for an audience, right? Now there's the police, there's the ambulance, there's the fire engines, and the whole mountain is, is God knows how long I was uh, uh, being cut out for. But as I come to, is the time that they dragged me out is when I, uh, is when they've cut me in loose, yeah. right? So I thought it was hilarious that I ain't got a scratch on me. So I keep remembering, I kept thinking about this Fonz. I don't know where he comes in. You, you know, when you come out of a, 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 a blackout, you, you, and I was giggling a lot. So then all of a sudden I thought to myself, well, if I'm, if I, that motor is concertina and it's on the mountain and they've had to cut me out, Where's the girlfriend that I had in the motor? Eva. They couldn't have cut her out because it's they cut me out. So I know she ain't in the car. I'm looking for a body because the motor is completely smashed to pieces, except for this little bit, which I'm in. So I'm looking for a body. or I'm look She ain't in the car. And she ain't nowhere to be seen. All of a sudden, the, the ambulance people start, to, I went, where's the signora? Where's the signora? The girl. Where's the signora? So anyway, all of a sudden, from laughter, it's gone to fear. Yeah. That I like, you know, where is she? What, what, have, like, what have I done? So one minute I'm hysterical, next minute I'm, I'm, I'm in like, like a blackout. A wave of fear, wave of anger. So all of a sudden, the police started putting it. I went, hold on, hold on. Where's the senior? Before I know where we are, a fight's broke out. Now, they got a kosh. All of a sudden, they start to do me with a kosh. All of a sudden, now I've got the kosh. Now, all of a sudden, I'm the governor. So all of a sudden, now, I'm, I'm, now every, all the police must have just jumped me then because the next moment I know, because you have blackouts. And in the next, a few days later, obviously, I must have been a, in, in a, uh, a serious way for a few days. But the next thing I remember from being on the mountain is I'm facing my dad, face to face. Right. Face to face. Now, I, I, I'm, I know I'm in the jug. I know that I'm... I, I'm I, so I went... So I looked at him. He starts to cry. So I said, "What's wrong? What's wrong? Is she is she dead?" He went, "No, I'm crying at the state of your face. You look like your face is out here." I said, "I can't feel my head." He said, "You're in a terrible state. Your head is out here." So I went, "Yeah, they kicked the, the kick the kicked me to pieces." I said, "I took they took a give me a right belt in." I said, uh, I said, in, until I, I'm, well, they must have bashed me to pieces once they got me into this nick. So I said, is she dead? He went, she's on life support, and they got there. She's been, a French lady has got. Her, she's your wife. This your girlfriend, which is girlfriend then, has got a rare blood group, and a French lady's come in. On the radio, they because they never had blood banks years ago in Spain. You're going back years ago, yeah. right? They never had all like, like it's not like an hospital of today. And Mandy had a a rare blood group, so they the French ladies come in and gave her blood, and she's in intensive care. So I said, "Oh, she lived." He went, well, she's got a double fractured skull, oh, yeah. so she might not. So that's what Schumacher's got. Yeah, that's what the, the racing car driver yeah, yeah. got, right? He said, "No one knows. She's got she's got a double fractured skull, and um, she's in intensive care." So I said, "Well, she ain't dead yet." I said, "I went no." So I went, "Well, there's a blessing." So I said, "Am I in a lot of trouble?" He said, "Yeah, you've done a few. I will. Uh, you've done, like you're 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 in it." So I went, all right, don't worry about that. That's all right. I, I said, uh, I said, how long have you been in, in Spain? He said, I flew out as soon as I heard that you that you was in trouble. 
I went, so it's been a few, it's been a while. He said, yeah. I said, um, do you think she'll live? He said, you can't tell. I went, okay, okay. I said, can you get me out? He went, the money's gone in. Because in, in years ago, you could bribe your way. Yeah. Years ago, you could bribe old Bill. Yeah. So I went, he said, I'll get you out through Gibraltar. I went, okay. I said, he said, and I'll stay here and make sure I won't leave. Make sure. I said, I'll stay and all. He went, listen, he said, I don't know how we're going to do it. He said, all I know is, so anyway, what happened was we got into the interpreter. She got into the judge, and the judge got into the, the six-old bill. Uh, 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 like so, everybody got a thousand pound. Like like yeah, everybody. A hell of a lot of money back then. Yeah, actually. going back all them years ago, and the old bill loved it. Yeah. You know, what I mean, it was a, like so did the judge, so did the interpreter, so that, like, everybody took a drink, which everything was corrupt in days, yeah. Yeah. like Mexico. Uh, uh, you know, it ain't maybe that way today, but it was then. So uh, anyway, I come out through the back door. I got a bit of bird, but I come out through the back door. And uh, uh, and then Mandy come home. And what happened to Schumacher never happened to her, thank God. There's a blessing. That's you know, you have, you, you have, everybody has their own time in life. Yeah. It, it, uh, you know, um, it just wasn't our time. Thank God it wasn't. No, me, it? no. Yeah, yeah. It weren't my time when they cut me out. I didn't go over the mountain because of the, 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 the barrier. Yeah. So it didn't jump. And you know what happened, don't you? What really happened is that as the motor rolled, it rolled three times. But she never had a safety belt on. Right. So as it rolled, she got slung out of the car. So that's what saved her. That's what, yeah, if yeah. she if the, if she had had a safety belt on, she would have been in she would have ki- been yeah. killed. Yeah. But as the motor rolls three times, she gets slung out, and the worst that happened was she got burned from the ground, like uh, ground burns, you know, and yeah. and and the, and her head double fractured skull. But uh, they, she did die, but they brought her back to life again. Like they, 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 she, she did die in that, but they brought her back. Amazing. Yes, yeah, amazing. It's God's, t- you know. If you ain't mean, if you, if you, you know that it's old saying. If you, you know, if your name ain't down, you, ain't, you know, you, you ain't coming. Yeah, you know, it's a funny old story, <laughs> that, isn't it? I guess it goes in heaven as well, if you understand what I mean. Yeah, yeah, it true. weren't our day. Yeah. And yeah. the funny thing about it is, all these things happened with my wife, and so we've been together nearly just under forty-five years. It's a lifetime. So. When people sort of say, uh, um, well, we've done most things together, if, 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 if you understand, the, the, say today where you bring up your church, young people bring the, the dads are like their wives. They 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 change the children's yeah. pat- nappies yeah. and w- w- were there. In the old days, a dad didn't know how to change a nappy. Yeah, we didn't know what you know. We didn't push back wheelchairs. It wasn't a thing. What we did is go out and get money. Uh, we worked and sent it home. Um, uh, that, so that 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 was a, a a big thing. I'm sure. And was there any in in recovery? Was there any circumstances where you were you may have been around drink, may maybe you met up with any old connections or whatever, but you know were uncomfortable in certain situations. Well, uh, th- th- there was a, cu- a cu- couple of times a fellow said to me, we, we, look, we're, um, I'm opening up, I'm going into the juicy game. With, with, uh, he said, and I'm going to Morocco to, going into the to, to oranges to go and get the oranges. He said, would you like to come? Well, in the back of my mind, I thought w- w- it might be a, a, a move. You know what I mean? So he said, look, I'm going with, this man here is the top Spanish footballer. Right. And he's renowned throughout Spain. He's like a, 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 a he's like a, the top man, like m- that, like you know, like uh, like that footballer was in, who, who, uh, Madonna. Right. His, yeah, yeah, like no, you know, this no, man. No, 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 everybody yeah. knows this certain guy. He said, "Look, we're going to Mor- Morocco, and they all know, like this man is the the top footballer, uh, uh, and um, and he wants to go in the juicing game." 
and his son's come to see me. He said, but I don't know, would you come? So I went, yeah, I'll go. And then all of a sudden that went into a quite a journey and, and there was, we was quite on the, it weren't the journey that I thought it was going to be and, and uh, it was quite an eye-opener. We were sort of like with a, a different little firm down there and it was quite, it was an, an eye-opener. And uh, one minute you thought you was going to buy or oranges and, and it was, it, it, uh, you're on a different table entirely. But, uh, to, to, to be honest with you, there's, obviously there's been loads of different things in life which that that are, that you know it, 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 to, to answer this question it, it 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 was very hard when a lot of your family are getting big money at the other game it was very hard to say no because the grass always looks green or and to go and just be in a market on a cold, freezing day to go and sell apples and oranges. Sometimes you don't want to do that, so especially when the, when the grass looks green or on the other side. So there's been times in my life that I like I, that I, I I went the opposite way. But I've got to tell you something: it it never worked out my way. It, it was some things are not meant to be. For certain people, if, do, do you understand what I mean? Um, I, 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 there ain't nothing in life that I haven't seen, and there's very few things that I haven't done. I'm a man who sort of like lived his life without sort of like talking about anything. But I, I, I've, I've been to quite a few barbecues in my life. You know what I mean? So uh, it's, it's. It's been quite a journey. There's not a lot I haven't seen or done. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it, does that answer that question? Yeah. Yeah. I think. I think. Um, you know what, what's crazy? We can be around. You can be around something like, I don't know, like a gun. You know. Yeah, but then yeah. a drink comes out, and we're. You know. Yeah. <laughs> you know. You're well, this year, but it's, those. They're the, they're the. That goes with the places that we drink in. You've got to remember. A lot of the, in the old days, the pubs used to shut at three, and then you'd have to go to a spieler to drink. Right. Till half past five. Now in them afternoon spielers in the West End, you'd be with everybody. So there ain't nothing you ever. You know, there's nothing that you. Nothing's do in my life. Nothing's going to be new. Was it not scary being around any of these people? Were you kind of fearless still at this but stage? I don't think that was being, being scared being around them. I, I thought it was quite exciting. Did you? I you know if you want to know the truth, and you got to remember, when I was younger, everybody used to get quite like you know everybody would be quite smart, uh, 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 and uh, no, on the on the contrary, I, I found it quite exciting, right. uh, and 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 the worse the situation, the more I'd like to uh, the more I'd you know the the worse the situation, the more I'd want to stay. So that adrenaline, and, you, and you've got to understand in in the old Covent Garden, in the old Covent Garden, all them markets around London had to the, they had to come to the, that Covent Garden to buy their fruit. So you knew all the the sons, but then I knew their dads and I knew their granddads, and they was from all different parts. So whenever I went in London, I knew people. You know, you're not just talking about I come from Fulham or Chelsea, and I, I that's where. I knew people throughout London, and I had a good name. Yeah. Once you've got a good name, that travels with you through wherever you go. Yeah. It's your name that travels, yeah. uh, and and so um, no, that didn't worry me. I'd find that more more the more more the excitement in the, uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, just a part of life. That would just be a part of life uh, for for me. In all honesty, to sum up. When when you were explaining your story up to recovery, it's just madness, it's carnage, and and that's what that's what my head was like. And it's the little things, the lying, and then telling another lie to cover that lie, and then another sure. lie to cover that. Lie. I've got a shit memory anyway, 
right? So trying to remember all that, it's just, it's hard work. And sure. to be honest, like you said, to my wife, because the first thing for me to go is my behaviour. If my behaviour goes, I'm picking up a drink or a drug. And I have to keep a check on my behaviour to make sure that I am trying to help others. I am trying to be honest. And my default setting is to lie. It's my default setting. I have to work at it. Work at it constantly. Yeah. Um, but I am so grateful for you. Um, and I will forever be grateful for you because you, you held your hand out for me and you took me under your wing when I needed it. And, and that started me on my journey. Thank you. I really am. And, and thank you so much for coming on, Jeff. And, uh, <laughs> give me a hand. Thank you. It's very good.